So today's video is going to focus on the female reproductive system as well as the female cycle. And then um, our last video, we'll talk a little bit about um, pregnancy and development. Okay, so you guys should have a labeled diagram, hopefully already you took care of that. So we're going to start jump right in and start talking about some functions. So we're going to start with the ovaries. The ovaries are going to produce what are called ova. Ova are the eggs. So the, ov the ovaries will produce the ova. They will also produce hormones such as estrogen and progesterone. And we will talk about, you know, when those hormones are produced and how they fit into the female cycle in a little bit. Okay, so the ovaries are going to contain ovarian follicles. And these follicles are what are going to change and mature and um, release an egg each month for the female. So each one of these follicles has what's called an oocyte. And an oocyte is an egg cell in it. Okay, so these ovaries, each ovary is going to be full of these ovarian follicles that contain these oocytes or egg cells that are going to mature throughout the female's lifetime and then be released on that monthly cycle. The duct system of the female reproductive tract is not connected to the urinary tract like it was for males. Right, Remember the males, the urethra was both um, for the release of urine from the body as well as the release of semen. But for females, the vagina and the urethra are two separate openings. So this, so for females, their reproductive tract is not connected to their urinary tract. So the uterine tubes, which are also called the fallopian tubes, okay, so fallopian tubes or uterine tubes, they're the same thing. So those uterine tubes or fallopian tubes, at the end of them, they have what are called these fimbrae. And those fimbrae are these little finger-like ends that are actually going to be sweeping the fluid. And they're going to be what sweeps the ovulated egg into the uterine tube. So the uterus and the, or the uterus, the ovary and the fimbrae here, they are not connected. So those fimbrae are sweeping. Remember, everything in our body, is all the cells in our body are surrounded by fluid. And so the fimbrae, these little finger projections at the end of the uterine tube here, they're constantly sweeping that fluid. And so while they're sweeping that fluid, that's what's going to make the ovulated egg or the ovulated oocyte be swept up into this uterine tube so that the egg gets swept up in that uterine tube and can then travel down the tube towards the uterus. The uterus itself, okay, so the uterus itself is actually not labeled on this picture, but it's this whole area right here. Okay, so the uterus is going to be a very muscular organ. Its job basically is to receive and then nourish and help grow a fertilized egg and then to actually expel the fetus. So it's going to receive and it's going to nourish that fertilized egg. If the egg is not fertilized, it will not implant into the uterus. And so it won't do the nourishing part. So it will receive the fertilized egg. It'll nourish that fertilized egg, help it grow, help it develop. And then it will actually help expel the fetus, which is why you have all this muscle or the myometrium in the uterus. So that when it's time for the baby to actually be born, we have these very strong muscles that can help push it out. So the uterus is made of three layers. The outermost layer, which is our parametrium. So remember, peri is around. So the parametrium is the outermost layer. This main middle layer here, right, is going to be our myometrium. Remember, myo means muscle. So that'll be a very muscular layer there. That, so that, again, when the baby is born, it can help push the baby out. And then the innermost layer 
is going to be what's called our endometrium, right? Inner in inside. So this is a mucosal layer. And this is where the fertilized egg is going to actually implant. So this is really the functional layer of the uterine wall. So this is where the um, innermost, uh, this is where the fertilized egg will implant. This is also the layer that grows thicker throughout the female's monthly cycle. It will grow thicker. And then if the egg is not fertilized, this is the layer that is shed monthly. That's what the, the bleeding portion of the female's menstrual cycle is, is the shedding of this inner layer of this functional layer of the endometrium. The endometrium has a second underlying layer, which is the basal layer. So the functional layer is going to be in your diagram here, this layer that's exposed to the cavity. And underneath that will be the basal layer. This layer is going to be deeper, so closer to the muscle. And this one is not shed. So this layer is permanent. It's fixed in the uterus and um, it helps support this functional layer as that functional layer thickens each month and then needs to be basically regrown after it's shed if it wasn't used. The cervix is located at the very base of the uterus. It connects the opening of the uterus. So the uterine lumen, remember lumen is an opening, right? So it connects the opening of the uterus to the opening of the vagina. Okay, so that's all it is is the, this area right here a, that connects the uterus and the vagina. The vagina itself a, um, is usually closed. A, you can see here how it looks like an open tube, but the walls of the vagina itself are usually closed a, to, help, um, to help offer protection. A, and the vagina has an acidic pH, again, also to help offer protection. Acidic... Um, Acid, an acidic pH is usually not um, a good environment for bacteria and such to grow and reproduce. So by closing off the vagina and making it acidic, because the vagina is open to the outside, this does help prevent infection and a vaginal infection could spread up into the uterus. Um, and so it, this helps you know, protect the uterus, protect a developing uh, fetus if there is a fetus growing inside of the uterus. Externally, so let's kind of come up here. So externally, the genitalia for females is going to be our labia majora and the labia minora. So these are, labia means lip. So basically, these are what surround the opening to the vagina. And then externally, you will also find the female clitoris. The mammary glands are an important part of the female reproductive cell system as well, even though they are not located in the pelvis. The mammary glands are what are going to produce milk after the child is born. Okay? And so the mammary glands, I just ran out of room here. The mammary glands, um, the increase in, in the estrogen hormone that is released um, at puberty is what's going to make these mammary glands mature so that when a female becomes pregnant and has um, a child, they are able to produce milk so that um, they can feed the child after childbirth. So I spend a little bit of time here talking about what's called oogenesis. Oogenesis is the making of the eggs. Oh, right there. So the egg formation. So oogenesis in females is not continuous um, like it is in males, like spermatogenesis is in males. So males are continually making sperm once they, especially once they hit puberty, um, you know, they are continually making these viable sperm. Where in females, it's not that way. So in females, all the follicles are actually made before the female is even born. 
Okay, so they are made before the fetus is born. And if you remember from the previous slide, the follicle is gonna contain an egg cell okay, or an oocyte. So all the follicles are made before the fetus is born. But meiosis, remember meiosis, which is our formation of those gametes, meiosis is suspended. So the actual, so the cells, the follicles are created but they're not fully developed into functioning eggs yet. So meiosis is, is suspended part of the way through this very first division here. Okay? So the cells are suspended in this state. Okay? And then after puberty, meiosis will go ahead and restart. And then we start um, releasing these functional egg cells. So we're going to look at um, the female sexual cycle, the menstrual cycle. Okay? Um, and we'll look a little closer at that there. So the female cycle basically has, has two, it's kind of two cycles that are happening at one time. It's the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle happening at the same time. And together, so the ovarian plus the uterine, together that gives us what we call our what we call the menstrual cycle, right? And the female sexual cycle. Okay. Um, it lasts um, on average about 28 days, but it can have a wide range from 21, from about 21 to about 40 days. A, kind of anywhere in there is is well within the range of normal. Um, it is, the menstrual cycle is going to vary kind of a lot, can vary kind of a lot from person to person, both in, you know, heaviness and timing and, and such. So we're going to focus first on the ovarian cycle, and then we'll look at the uterine cycle. Again, these are both happening like at the same time. A, and, and we'll look at a graph in a minute that will kind of put the two together. So the ovarian cycle is focused solely on that maturation. Remember we said that the oocyte was not fully formed. So it's the, the maturation and then the release of the oocyte. And it's broken into two phases. We have the follicular phase, okay, there's your spelling right there, and then the luteal phase. Okay, so during this follicular phase, we're going to have several of those what are called primordial follicles. So these are those immature follicles that were formed in the fetus before it was born. So several of these primordial follicles are going to develop into what we call a primary follicle. And then that primary follicle is going to release an egg. Okay, so or release an oocyte. So if we look at our diagram here, we can see here at stage one, we have several of these primordial follicles, and they're going to be developing into what we call the primary follicle. Okay, um, there's a lot that's happening here. Okay, so you you will want to make sure that you're you know really taking um, good notes. You may even want to go back after you take the notes and kind of put it uh, maybe into a diagram form that works for you or like a progression form. Um, but there just is a lot happening here that we want to make sure we get you know sorted out. So the primary follicle is going to start to divide so that we get this thicker layer around the oocyte. You can see it forming here. You can see that thicker layer forming there. And that is going to be, those cells there are called our granulosa cells. Whoops, left out the E there. So in our list here, you can see that happening there in number two. So I had these primordial follicles that are starting to mature into these primary follicles. And part of that process is going to be that thickening and formation of those granulosa cells around the outside. So once that thickens up like that, this now becomes what's called a secondary follicle. 
So it was a primary follicle until the wall got nice and thick, and now it becomes a secondary follicle. So as that secondary follicle grows and matures, you're going to start to see spaces with fluid in it. Let me, let's make this blue. See these spaces here where I'm getting fluid filling in those spaces? Okay, that's going to be that, that's going to be the vesicular follicle. Remember vesicles, um, boom, there's a vesicular follicle, a final vesicular follicle. Remember vesicles in a cell, they hold materials. They're like little storage sacs. So this secondary follicle, as it continues to mature, starts getting these gaps in it that are going to become fluid filled. And eventually those gaps merge into one big fluid filled area. You can see that here. Okay, and so that follicle now becomes my vesicular follicle. So I went from a primordial to a primary follicle. Okay, I laid down those granulosa cells, which now let it mature into a secondary follicle. And now that I've got the big fluid-filled space in it, I have a vesicular follicle. During this whole time, I'm releasing lots and lots of estrogen. So during the time that these, that these follicles are maturing, estrogen is constantly being released and it's a more and more kind of process and as we increase this estrogen that's being released that is going to go up up to the pituitary in the remember that gland in the brain so that's going to go up to the pituitary and stimulate the release of two more hormones what we call fsh which is follicle stimulating hormone so its name hopefully is giving you a clue. Oh, it stimulates the follicle. This thing she's been talking about just becomes a different kind of follicle as it's progressing. So this follicle stimulating hormone is going to come back and um, have an impact on the follicle as well as what's called LH hormone. LH hormone, LH A is luteinizing hormone. And the luteinizing hormone that is released is going to actually cause the oocytes to finish their divisions, so the egg cells to finish dividing. So on our previous slide, we talked about how the egg cell is originally formed in the fetus, right? And it gets the meiosis gets suspended part of the way through, so it like freezes in time. So as so on each month, as this cycle is happening in the female, as these follicles are maturing and this estrogen is being released, that estrogen is triggering the FSH and the luteinizing hormone to be released. That luteinizing hormone is going to go to the oocytes, to the egg cell, and encourage them to complete that meiosis that they had already started. So let's add that to our slide here. So in addition to um, having those oocytes complete their divisions, luteinizing hormone, there will be a surge, so a large release of luteinizing hormone that will happen around this time as well, which will cause the actual ovulation. So ovulation is going to be the, the, the rupturing of the follicle and the ovarian wall to actually release the egg. So the follicle and the ovarian wall will rupture and you can see this happening right here. So they will re they'll rupture and they'll release the oocyte out for those fimbrae to sweep up into the uterine tube. And that's going to be in response to this luteinizing hormone surge. Okay, so again, I know we've gone through this a couple of times, but you know, we're just going to kind of summarize it one more time. So this is all part of this ovarian cycle. And this is just one portion of it. We haven't finished the ovarian portion of the cycle yet. We've just done the follicular phase, which is that maturation of the follicle. So from the primordial follicles to the primary follicle with that 
thickening of the granulosa cells to the secondary follicles that develop the vesicles. So it becomes a vesicular follicle. Um, and then we get the hormone changes, which are going to start causing the, um, the oocytes to finish their division, right? This estrogen that's being released this entire time that is um, signaling the pituitary to release the FSH to continue to encourage the follicle to grow and develop, as well as the LH, the luteinizing hormone, so that it, this, the oocyte can continue its meiosis that had been suspended. And then the actual ovulation. So once that egg is released, the final part of the ovarian cycle is the luteal phase. And the luteal phase is going to involve what we call the corpus luteum. So the corpus luteum is going to consist of these basically leftover cells from the follicle. You can um, see it there, those like yellowy looking cells. So the corpus luteum are the, the cells that remain once the follicle has ruptured and released the oocyte. And the corpus luteum is going to secrete progesterone. Progesterone is going to help support the pregnancy. Every time the female goes through this cycle, which is a, about a monthly phase, every time the female goes through this cycle, it is in preparation for pregnancy to happen. So the corpus luteum is going to release progesterone, which will help support pregnancy. And if that egg is, if that oocyte is not fertilized, then those progesterone levels, as well as the estrogen levels that were happening earlier, are all going to start to drop and the cycle will start all over again. They'll drop, the uterine wall will shed, and, and then the process will start all over again. So those hormones are constantly going up and down throughout this cycle. And again, we'll look at um, the graph that helps kind of bring that all together visually. So at the same time that this ovarian cycle is happening, the uterine cycle is happening as well. Okay? And so the uterine cycle is going to focus, obviously, specifically on the uterus. So we have the ovarian cycle, which is the ovary and the maturation and the release of the egg. Well, at the same time, the uterus is preparing to receive that egg and then grow and develop it if that egg got fertilized. So the menstrual phase is actually the beginning of the uterine cycle. It is the first uh, usually four to five days. Again, this can vary from person to person. And so that menstrual phase is when that functional layer that we mentioned earlier of the uterus, when that functional layer of the uterus is being um, broken down and shed. So that innermost layer of the endometrium. After that phase, after that um, layer has been shed off, and again, that only happens if the egg has not been fertilized and implanted. Okay, so after that sheds off, the uterus will then go through a proliferative phase. So the proliferative phase is where it proliferates or grows back, right? So during this phase, I'm gonna have that functional layer, that functional layer is going to start to grow back. And it's going to grow back in response to an increase in those estrogen levels. So that functional layer starts growing back. During this same time, this is when this is timed. So the egg is maturing, the follicle is getting ready for ovulation. These two things are happening at the same time because they're two different organs. So the ovary, the egg is maturing, the uterus is laying down a new functional layer in preparation for that egg to be released and potentially fertilized. And then the final part is going to be the secretory phase. And during this, my regrowth is going to start to slow down, but I'm going to start to bring a large blood supply to the area. So there'll be uh, start laid down an increase in blood vessels to the area again for in preparation to help nourish a developing or growing fetus and um, growing some nutrient glands, things that are all going to help support 
the fertilized egg. And this is going to be happening due to that increase in progesterone that is going to come from during that luteal phase of the ovarian cycle when the corpus luteum is releasing that progesterone. Um, that's going to be the signal that uh, that egg is coming. Let's, you know, really get ready for it. So let's look at um, this, you know, graph over here on the side. You guys have this graph here in your notes. Okay, um, and we're going to be looking, let's kind of focus, let's point out here. I've got my ovarian cycle here at the top and then the uterine cycle in the middle and then I've got, or at the bottom, I'm sorry. And then my hormones here in the middle, not that concerned about the body temperature part here. Okay, so in the ovarian cycle, Okay, you can see here, I've got my growing follicles and ovulation happening here in the first couple of weeks. Okay, and what's happening, timing that here with my uterine cycle is while that follicle is growing and developing, the uterus is actually going through menses and shedding that functional layer that it didn't use the cycle before. So that's all happening during the follicular phase here of that ovarian cycle. And what you can see happening here in the hormone region is near the end of that follicular phase, right? I'm getting these increases here in estrogen. And um, those increases in estrogen, remember, are going to trigger the release of the luteinizing and follicle stimulating hormone. So see how they're happening just after that estrogen or that estradiol is starting to increase. And you'll see that surge in luteinizing hormone, that peak of lots of luteinizing hormone is triggering the ovulation. While that um, oocyte is being ovulated, I'm increasing right? I've got my um, proliferative phase and secretory phase of my uterine cycle now happening. I'm growing that functional layer back, right? This is my functional layer here. And this at the very bottom here is that basal layer. So I'm growing that functional layer back Okay, and um, increasing my blood vessels here, my nutrient supply. And now my ov ovarian cycle has shifted to that luteal phase near the end of the whole cycle. It's the corpus luteum now, which is going to be increasing those levels of progesterone. And those increased levels of progesterone here are signaling the uterus to continue to lay down in preparation. And then again, if this egg is not fertilized and implanted, the whole thing starts over and we start again with the menses, the shedding and the maturation of new follicles. Okay, so I think that's probably enough for now. We were actually gonna talk about fertilization, but I'm gonna shift fertilization to the final video where we also talk a little bit about pregnancy. Okay, so um, we'll practice as much as we can with this, but I cannot stress enough. There's a lot of vocabulary in here. Um, really, you know, take a look at your notes and get them organized so that you um, can be prepared for your summatives.